So apparently there was a little fan gathering in San Diego last week and both Marvel Studios and Warner Bros decided that, that would be a good time to release new clips and trailers for their upcoming projects. Marvel Studios dropped a new trailer for Doctor Strange and I am very curious to know what practical purpose running Manhattan through a kaleidoscope serves. Speaking of unusual things, Kurt Russell's role in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 was finally revealed. We knew that Russell would be playing Star-Lord's dad, but the actual identity of the character has been a mystery. In the comics, Quill's father is Jason, King of Spartax, and the real dick. However, director James Gunn long ago denied that that would be the case in the movies. Many speculated Adam Warlock is a possible candidate due to his relationship with the Infinity Gems, however, it looks like the cinematic version of Star-Lord will actually be the son of Ego, the living planet. Certainly didn't see that one coming. Next up, the villain for Spider-Man Homecoming was introduced. Once again, Spidey will be tangling with a green-clad old guy with mechanical flight, but this time it won't be the Green Goblin, but instead, the Vulture. The villain of the Black Panther was also revealed with the announcement that Michael B. Jordan will be playing the appropriately named Eric Killmonger. Because when your name is Killmonger, you obviously have to be a bad guy. And while this wasn't necessarily mentioned at Comic-Con, it looks like the Avengers Infinity War is no longer going to be a two-parter, or at the very least, the second film is getting a unique name of its own. Possibly Infinity Crusade? Finally, after months, if not years of speculation, Marvel revealed that Captain Marvel will be played by not Katie Sackhoff. Nope, the role of Carol Danvers is going to Brie Larson, which, oddly enough, means that Captain Marvel will be joining Loki and Nick Fury on an ill-fated trip to King Kong's home turf in Kong Skull Island. Moving away from the big screen, Netflix announced that Daredevil is getting a third season and premiered the first trailer for Luke Cage. No sign of the yellow tiara yet, but we do get to watch him wrap a car door around a thug like it's a taco shell. And we can't have Power Man without Iron Fist backing him up. The teaser for Iron Fist doesn't give much away, but at least we know Luke Cage won't be the only one with some serious muscle behind him. Hello, Danny. Of course, this means we're getting ever closer to the Defenders. That teaser revealed even less than the Iron Fist one did, but the voiceover at least confirmed that Stick will make an appearance. You think the four of you can save New York? You can't even save yourselves. Finally, while not part of the rest of the Comic-Con reveals, it looks like an X-Men related TV project is finally going to make it to the finish line. The first trailer for FX's Legion is at the web. From the creator of Fargo, Legion will center around the schizophrenic mutant David Howler. Over on the DC side of things, Hall H got a sneak peek at some new Suicide Squad footage for the soundtrack remix preview, and along with continuing their tradition of highly entertaining teasers, the new video revealed, among other things, that the movie will be showing off a little bit more of Harley Quinn than the made-for-television trailers would have you believe. Hi guys! Wonder Woman got her first trailer, and we got to see the warrior princess and her badass Amazons kick ass in World War I. And this was going to be the part where I took a look at the Ocean's Eleven style Justice League trailer, but Warner Bros. really does not want me to do that, so instead, let's put our attention back on Marvel's Netflix offerings. Remember, Punisher is coming up soon. Moving out of Hall H and into the realm of animation, three new animated features were announced at Comic-Con last weekend. Matt Ryan will return to the role of John Constantine in animated form with an adaptation of Justice League Dark, and following that, a new Teen Titans feature will adapt the Judas Contract storyline. However, don't expect this one to be a direct adaptation. The animated Judas Contract may share similar beats to the original story, but it'll function as a sequel to last year's Justice League vs. Teen Titans, which features a completely different roster. Finally, DC will finish off 2017 with Batman and Harley Quinn, which won't adapt any comic in particular and instead be an original story from Harley Quinn's creator, Bruce Tipp. But the big news wasn't just coming from the San Diego Convention Center itself this week. Blocks away, Sonic the Hedgehog celebrated his 25th anniversary at the House of Blues. 
There, Sega announced Sonic Mania, a new game in the style of the Genesis classics that celebrates Sonic's earliest and, let's face it, most beloved games. Unlike other 2D entries like Sonic 4 or the classic levels of Sonic Generation, Sonic Mania's physics are identical to the old 2D games, but with new animations and a new mechanic thrown in. Namely, the Drop Dash, which allows Sonic to charge up a spin dash in mid-air to keep his momentum going. There's a lot more to say about the game, and fortunately, I was able to land a short interview with developer Christian Whitehead. Whitehead has previously been tasked with porting classic games to modern platforms, and I talked with him about what it was like to move up to creating a whole new game. Well, I think, you know, like, the really cool thing is, like, it's almost like a natural progression of, like, the previous work, and that, like, Sonic CD introduced Tails as a, a new playable character, and then Sonic 1 had all the, the classic cast of playable characters, and then by Sonic 2, the remaster, we, we got to put in Hidden, Hidden Palace Zone, and that was sort of like the real test of like how a new team captured the original feel. And so they have the opportunity to sort of take springboard off that and then create something, um, you know, that's, you know it's a, sort of a more low-key pixel art game, but it's still it's still a celebration of Sonic, and we just you know really wanted to make something that focused on classic fun and. Just like get the gameplay right and focus on new ideas for all the new zones. Like every every level that Sonic visits in this game is brand new. Now, can you tell me if the, uh, the zones are linked story-wise? Is there a progression? Yes. Yeah, so the there is a story. We can't talk about what the story is yet, but it is going to be a brand new story. And like the events in the game, like you know, Sonic has a reason for coming back to these original classic zones and. You know, we wanted like Sonic's classic world to be like a living. You know, it's not they're not just fixed in time. They you know they change, and so that sort of explains why um, you know there's new bosses in um, Green Hill. There's like um, you know like what you would normally expect to happen in uh, like a zone from Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Like something totally different would happen. Okay. Um, now, uh, upstairs playing the demo, I saw that there's you know, the, the classic you know, one-hit shield, and then you got the fire and the lightning shield in there. Are there, you know, I guess, can you tell me, are there new shield mechanics coming on the way? or We, we haven't, um, I think at the moment we're kind of like sticking, like the main new addition at the moment is the drop dash. The drop dash, yeah. And so, I mean, that's replaced the insta shield, which you know, might be controversial for a lot of the fans, but sort of in our research for like how maybe new players can approach Sonic with the, the drop dash basically allows um, like you've got a steep curve that Sonic needs to get off like uh, I kind of found like a lot of new players like they can struggle going backwards and forwards and like the spin dash the original one you've got to like wait and come to a complete stop so the drop dash alleviates that way Strange Sonic's Insta Shield for the ability to charge up momentum in the air, and then the drop dash allows you to unleash that momentum instantly on the ground just for a quick boost. Um, and of course, like more, more advanced players, um, you know, they're, they're going to be able to exploit the drop dash for like speed running abilities, to like smash through item boxes, and you know, kind of launch off um, terrain in you know, Classic Sonic is very much sort of like what Tony Hawk was in the 32 bit era, in that, like, the first time you play it, you kind of suck and you, like, land poorly on slopes and that, and then you learn the mechanics and learn how to move through the environment. The game feels like it came out of the Genesis, but I saw that uh, some of the uh, a lot of the animations look new. Some of them look like they came out of Sonic 2. Some of them I've never seen before. Are all the animations redone, or did they... Yeah, so basically we, um, you know, we modeled, we looked at, like, Sonic 1, and we kind of wanted to capture that, but we wanted to encompass all of the game's types of animations within one unified style. And so even though, like, some of the animations will look the same, like, the... Um, you know, t under the hood, everything's been redrawn. Um, obviously, the fluidity of all the animations is much more like a deli. Uh, it's like, aesthetically, we're kind of like, what would Sonic be on the Sega Saturn? Like, what kind of, like, new, like, new 1995 technology could they use to improve the game? And so we're just like, well, animation fidelity could jump so, so much higher. Even though it's like pixel art, 
you can just make it feel so much more alive by having more motion and all the animations. And, so that, yeah, we, it's kind of, you know, it's a bit of Sonic 1, a bit of Sonic 2, a bit of Sonic 3, but it's all unified in one style. And if you notice that some sections of that interview were awfully loud, it's because while I was talking with Whitehead, Sega was announcing a second new Sonic game for 2017. Developed by the team behind Sonic Colors and Sonic Generations, the unnamed Sonic project looks to be a new 3D entry that will reunite modern and classic Sonic. So it's basically Sonic Generations 2, even if that's not what the name ends up being. Hitting theaters this week, hey, this looks familiar. It's Suicide Squad. Will Warner Bros. finally release a DC movie that people like? We will find out this Friday. Meanwhile, Machinima's Transformers Combiner Wars debuts this week on Go90.com, which is apparently a free streaming service that Verizon is trying to get off the ground. I've never heard of it until now, but it costs nothing to check out. Over in video games, hitting PC this week is Batman the Telltale series, which I almost didn't catch because Telltale didn't bother actually listing the release date in their Steam page. But I digress. If you like Telltale games and Batman, which is probably a big demographic, then this'll likely be a solid buy. Moving on to games from developers who do properly fill out their info on Steam, we have Intrude, a very retro-looking first-person shooter possibly looking to capitalize on the recent nostalgia for Wolfenstein and Doom. Speaking of retro, there's Broken Armor, which honestly looks like something I might have played on DOS in 1990. So if you're nostalgic for games that came on 5 and a quarter inch floppy disks, it might be worth taking a look at. Next up, there's Valkyrius Prime, and holy bullet hell is there a lot going on here. If you're a fan of top-down shooters, this game looks like it's adding a couple interesting mechanics to the genre. The same probably can't be said about Rising Islands, but it sure looks pretty with its red-blue switching mechanics and platform running. Also looking good is Abzu. From the art director of Journey, we have... Underwater Journey, which isn't a slam because this game really does look quite pretty. Now it just needs to cross over with Echo the Dolphin. This is The Police appears to be a variety of different games wrapped up in a package of law enforcement. Your protagonist is a police chief that has to navigate a world of crime and corruption on his way to retirement. And finally, Faria, Ghost of the Stream will be this week's indie RPG. Featuring no combat, no game overs, and a friendly cast of characters, this is the RPG for people looking for a stress-free puzzle adventure. Which brings us to this week's CG Bros video, check out Kirio, a beautiful looking short by ArtFX that goes through the stages of life for a girl and her favorite bear. And finally, Nukazuka brings Pokemon Go to life in a terrible, terrible way. And that's everything for this week, so how does Sonic Mania sound to you? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to like and subscribe, pass this video around to your friends, and have a great week!